Well, hello there. This is Adam with cloudautomation.blog. Thanks for watching my video. In this video, I'm going to go over a very basic vCenter VM creation with an HP Operations Orchestration or HPOO. So what we have on the screen right here is, is HPOO 10.6. Before we jump in, I just want to show a few things that I did to save us some time throughout the process because we will use this flow in many flows like this again. So I created a project in the top left and under the project, I'm just going to go down to the system accounts tab and you can see I've created a couple accounts here so if I just if I drill into these what you do is you you go to this, the folder and you right click on you click new and you do new system account so what this does is this stores this credential so we can access it later without having to type it in over and over and over again we want to do the same thing if we scroll down some more we go to system properties I actually want to add those hosts so you can see I have an IPAM host a Qualys host a ServiceNow host as well as that vCenter host that I want to show right now so going back up we're going to create a new workflow, and you can see here is my workflow. Create vCenter VM and a couple precursor tasks. So create AD account, create IPAM entry. So this would be, you know, I actually need to create an Active Directory account. I need to create a DNS entry and then get that IP address back and, and save it to actually apply it to the customization spec. You know, for this demo, I skipped over this because it's not really needed, but these are things that would happen prior to actually creating the VM. And then as you can see, then there's some things that happen after I create the VM, which we'll get into in just a second. But what you're going to want to do is go down here to Library, Integrations, VMware, VMware Virtual Infrastructure, and vSphere, down to Virtual Machines, down to Templates, and use Deploy VM from Template. Click that, drag that onto your canvas, and you'll see that's here. Assign from, click that, and you'll see, you'll see your host. So if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see your host that you added under Properties. So select your vCenter host, the user. If you, if you click that, you do system account, you'll do that vCenter credential that you added, and the credential type is the username. The password is the same process, except this time you're going to have the credential type as password. You can leave the port and the protocol alone, the closed session, the async, leave that alone. The template name is what you'll get out of vCenter. It's your vCenter VM template. So if I go over to vCenter real quick, you'll see here templates. You'll see my Windows 2K12 R2 standard. So type that in here, use constant, make sure it's not prompt user and it is use constant, type in your template name. The VM data center, again, is your data center. If I go back to the vSphere web client, you'll see home dash lab. The VM name, I have this as an input, so I prompt the user for text and I assign that variable to VM name because I want to use that later. The folder, so you again, use constant slash uh, test VMs. Slash is just root, so that's when it'll put it on like a cluster a VM resource pool I did not use. Data store I used VM, VM NFS01. Again, if I go over to my VM WebSphere client, I click storage, you'll see VM NFS01. Host system I left empty because I'm using a cluster. You'll see my cluster name there. Thin provision I put as true. The customization template name. That is your customization spec. Again, if I go to the vSphere web client, I'm running 6.5. I'm going to go to policies and profiles. Customization specifications, you'll see here Windows 2012 R2. Go back to HPOO, Windows 2012 R2. And some of these are case sensitive, so I just match them. And scrolling down from there, the rest are, I just left blank. Connection timeout and socket timeout are all blank. They're all the, the default values. Now I know that works, um, but what if you actually want to do something with that VM, some other orchestration type workflow? And this is, kind of, this is a trick I learned. You have to know when the VM is actually built. So you'll see when I go to kick this, this piece off, it takes my storage array about two minutes to actually clone that VM. Within those two minutes, um, what if your storage rate is slower or faster? Um, it might take 10 or 15 minutes. I've seen um, you know, very large old SAN arrays take 15, 20 minutes to clone a thick provision 100, 150 gig VM. So what we do is we want to do the Git Virtual Machine task. That's under that same tree. You can see right here, Git Virtual Machine. So if I drill into that, we want to use those exact same parameters from the previous workflow action, the deploy VM. Assign from host, the username, we're going to do a system account, the password, we're going to do a system account, the port, the protocol, the closed session, we're going to leave those alone. The VM data center, you can assign from the previous item. It should actually already, already fill these out, the VM data center, the host name, the VM identification type, we want to use the name because we know the name, we don't have anything else, we just know that the user typed in a server name. And then that server name is this virtual machine which we're assigning from VM name which came from the previous workflow item. And if that fails, and it's going to fail the very first time it runs, it's not going to be able to find the VM. It's still going to be running this. And when it fails, we want to loop it around. So you can see I added a loop. 
I'm just counting from 1 to 20, so you'll see from 1 to 20. And every time it, it, it fails and then retries, it's going to sleep for 60 seconds. So a maximum of 20 minutes. If it takes my storage rate 20 minutes to actually clone a VM, something's wrong, and it should fail. And then the last step we're doing here, and this is just for, for my own records, is actually create a CMDBCI, so a configuration item as well as a change control and map all of that together. So let's see what this looks like when we actually press debug. I'm going to press debug there from the local connection. I'm going to press play. I'm going to leave these closed session false and async true. Those are the default values. I'm going to leave those. But I'm going to type in, we're going to do cab-testvm-01. I'm going to click continue. And you'll see here the step clone virtual machine was complete. So it was able to queue that. So if I click on this, you'll see here tasks 5820 tasks successfully queued. That means that vCenter recognized that and queued that clone. Said, okay, everything's great. As far as HPOO was concerned, the task was orchestrated. But it's not actually complete, so we don't know if it was successful or not. Maybe the data store ran out of space or something happened. So what we want to do is, again, that Git virtual machine. This is where it's going to go into that loop. If I jump over the vSphere web client, you'll see here, this is the one that actually it just kicked off at, at 1041 and 52 seconds. It's currently being cloned. And if I jump back here, you'll see that loop will go through. And I'm just going to sit here and actually cut some of this video out. But if we look at, at a timestamp, you'll see here 2241. It just ran again. So this workflow is completed successfully. As you can see here, the VM name is cab-testvm01. The VM ID that it pulled out of vCenter when the task was completed is VM-288. If we jump over to vCenter, we'll see here the VM was successfully created. I go back to HPOO. We can then see that the next couple workflows did also complete successfully. So you can see the create snow CMDB and change control completed successfully. And what we can do is we can jump over to ServiceNow real quick, do a quick refresh on my change requests. And you'll see here, change 3009, automated change for VM creation. If I drill into that, we will see it was requested by HP Operations Orchestration, hardware. There's the configuration item that was also created. The priority, you can see a short description as well as a longer description. This, you can put whatever you wanted here. The point of this is that I can create the CI. I can create the change control, and then I can link those two together pretty simply for this virtual machine. One thing I wanted to cover real quick, on your system property, that vCenter host property, you can just set it something like this. You can see mine's cab-vc01.cab.local. You don't need to put HTTPS. You don't need to put 443 or port 8443 or 10443. Um, you can just leave it just like this. The port will actually be used within the workflow. So if I go back to the workflow, you'll see here, port is specified in this workflow as well as the host that it's pulling it from. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Hit me on Twitter, YouTube, or if you have a special request or you want me to demo something else, feel free, again, to hit me up on Twitter. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.